Okay, I'm going to do the last two exam questions, and I think these are perhaps a little bit trickier, especially the part B of these. So again, it's another shading of both kinds of things, so I might go a little bit quicker through this one. So we've got circle, center, one, one, and the radius is three. And then we've got some half lines, but it's worth just saying that the center of that is just going to be two, zero. And I guess it's between sort of like 45 degrees and 135 degrees, if that's how you like to think of it in terms of degrees. Personally, I like just think of it in terms of fractions. And then we'll deal with this part in just a second. So let's do a quick sketch here. Everything is going to be solid lines because everything is all um, less than or equal to signs. So we're going to have at 1, 1 a radius of three. So let's draw quite a big circle like this. Again, that's terrible, but luckily I can move it around. Um, I should probably indicate this is one, one, and I'm going to remember it's a, a circle. And from two, which is going to be two, zero, it's going to be over here. That should be an empty circle. I'm going to do 45 degrees, which would be like this, and 135 degrees, which I'm hoping you can tell is going to go through the center of the circle because if this is one one and this is two zero then 45 degrees would mean that it would go through that so you probably should indicate on here that this is pi over four and then you could either call this a right angle or you could say that this is pi over four just to show that we've got it all correct and we're just going to shade those bits that satisfies both of them at the same time so it is going to be the part of the circle and the kind of v-shaped wedge that goes inside both of them. Okay, then what you will notice for the second part of the question is we are going to the complex number W. And actually you should spot that this thing is exactly the same as this thing, apart from it's switched from a less than or equal to to an equal to sign. And this thing is saying that it's exactly the same as this bit, it's just talking about just the pi over four bit. So the argument that we're talking about is this, we're saying that W lies somewhere along this half line and it also lies on the circle. So the place where it's going to lie is actually exactly here, where it's on both the circle and the half line at the same time. Now, I was trying to think if there was um, a geometric way of doing this, and I'd really like if someone comes up with a geometric way of doing this about how they might have how they might have spotted it, but I, I actually couldn't spot a geometric way for this. So if anybody finds a geometric way of answering this, of what the this um, length of... Um, w squared is, I'd be really interested. But I'm going to do the algebraic way, and it's kind of good to see both ways of doing this. So I'm going to come up with the equation of the circle and the equation of that line, and then we're going to just sort of see how that all works. So the equation of the circle. Let's see what happens for the equation of the circle. So we're trying to find out what w is, right? If we can find out what w is, we can then find out this. Um, that w in black is really annoying me. Oh, well, I'm going to have to leave it there. So the equation of the circle would be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared, because that's the centre, equals the radius squared, which is 3 squared, or just 9. And now we're going to think about the equation of the half line. Now for the equation of the half line, we can tell that it's going to have a gradient of 1, and we can see that it's going through the point 2, 0. So pretty simply, it's just going to be y minus 0 equals m brackets x minus 2. In other words, y is equal to x minus 2. Now, if y is equal to x minus 2, we must just note to ourselves, this is only going to be true for values of x which are greater than 2, because the line is only starting where x is equal to 2. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to solve y equals x minus 2 and this equation, I'm going to solve them simultaneously, and that should give me where w is. So I'm going to start by expanding this bracket, and I'm also going to sub in there. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus, now this is y minus 2. So y is x minus 2, so it's y minus 1. y is x minus 2, and we're going to subtract 1 from that, and that all squared is equal to 9. So it's x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x minus 3 squared equals 9. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 9. Now I can cancel the 9 here and here, so that gets left with a 0, and then I can do a little bit of simplifying, so that I have 2x squared minus 8x plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to just go to my graphics calculator that I've got sat next to me here, and I'm going to put it on 
and my quadratic solver. So I'm going to put in 2, minus 8, and 1. And I get that my values of x are either 4 plus or minus root 14 over 2. Now, we said earlier on that x has got to be greater than 2. So because x has got to be greater than 2, x cannot be equal to the 4 minus root 14 over 2. And that's actually because this is 0 0.12. Uh, 1.1291. So it's actually too small. So that one actually doesn't fit. So this means that the value of x is going to be 4 plus root 14 over 2. Now, if you want to find the y value of w, remember w is x plus iy here, then we're just going to take the x value, which is 4 plus root 14 over 2, and we're going to subtract 2 from it. So 4 plus root 14 over 2, subtract 2, and we get it's root 7 over 2. I don't know why my calculator likes doing like this. I'm going to do it on my other calculator. So 4 plus root 14 over 2, subtract 2. That's root 14 over 2. That's the same thing, okay? Root 7 over 2 and root 14 over 2. But if you do it on a normal calculator, my slide-in calculator is a bit odd. Um, but it's still correct. So we get that w is equal to 4 plus root 14 over 2 plus root 14 over 2 i. So we're going to find out the modulus of w all squared. Now because it's all squared that means I don't need to include the square root sign. So it's just going to be 4 plus root 14 over 2 all squared plus root 14 over 2 all squared. Now because my other calculator is being a bit strange at the moment with thirds, I'm just going to quickly calculate this off screen. So you can try this yourself but I'm going to do 4 plus root 14 over 2 squared plus the root 14 over 2 squared and we get 11 plus 2 root 14. Now, if I saw that number, I'd probably be thinking, oh gosh, something's gone wrong with this question. But you will, please, you will be pleased to see that that is the correct answer, 11 plus 2 root 14. And you can see that we've got this sketch drawn nicely here as well. We've got the same sketch. So if anybody does spot a geometric way of doing this bit, I would be really, really interested. I spent um, a few minutes trying to figure out if there was a geometric way. But seeing as this line and this circle equation was pretty simple, I thought it was OK to try the algebra method. But do let me know in the comments if you do spot a geometric way. So last one from chapter two. Um, we do this question that we have here, and it's got a really neat question about area at the end. So first of all, it wants us to show on the Argan diagram this thing. It's a circle, its center is 10, 12, and the radius is 8. So let's do that for part A of the question. So 10 along and 12 up. That means it's not going to touch either of the sides because 8 is obviously a bit smaller. Let's move that so it's, it's properly centered. So the centre is 10, 12, which means that coordinate, in case this is helpful, is going to be 18. That coordinate is going to be 2, because it's going 8 above and 8 below the 10. And then along the sides here, in case it's useful, because it's 12 at this point, it's going to be then going up 8. So it's 20 and down 8 from 12, which is 4. So that's the first two marks. The second thing has then got some shading kind of going on. So again, it's, an inter it's both of these things at the same time. This time, they want it to be less than or equal to 8. So it's going to be anything that's inside the circle. But they've also given us something different. We've got some half lines. And the half lines are going to be starting from the coordinate 10, 10. And they're going between 0 and 90. So I'm going to just zoom in on this. 10, 10 is going to be slightly below it. And it's going to be going between 0 and 90. And they're both going to be solid lines. So there's going to be this solid line here and this solid line here, 0 and pi over 2. So I'm going to shade these in. And where it's true for both of them is going to be inside this section that we've got here, this green section that we've got. Okay. 
Um, now all it wants us to do is to determine the area of the region defined by A. So in other words, what is the area of this green region? Now this is where you've got to be pretty good at being able to break some things down into different shapes, different composite shapes. Now the way my mind sees this is I see this as like a slice of pizza, which is this part that I'm talking about up here, or a slice of cake plus a triangle. So I'm going to try and label in a different colour some of the distances that we know here. So this is the radius of the circle. So the radius of the circle is 8. And this bit here is also the radius of the circle. So it's 8. Now, if this coordinate is 10, 12, and this one, which I didn't label before, is 10, 10, then this gap between here and here in the y coordinates must be 2. So I think I've got enough information to be able to work out all of these things. I'm going to deal with the triangle to begin with, OK, because I think that might be one of the easier ones to work out. So this is 8 and this is 2. Ideally, I'd like to find out what the base of this triangle here is. So I'm going to do a quick bit of Pythagoras to find that. It's going to be um, 8 squared minus 2 squared. So that's root 64 minus 4, which is root 60 which is the same as, what's that going to be, 15 times 4, so 2 root 15. So this is 2 root 15. And so that means that the area of the triangle part that we've got is going to be the base times the height divided by 2. So that's 2 root 15 times by the height divided by 2, or multiplied by a half. So it's just going to be, obviously, these cancel here. So it's just 2 root 15 is the area of the triangle. Now we're going to try and do this sector area that we've got here. Now, if you haven't studied year two maths, there is a formula, which is a half r squared theta for the area, where this is the radius and theta is the radians um, of the, the angle that's in the middle part here. So all we need to do is really work out what that angle is. So what I am going to do is figure out what this angle is from the triangle. And then I can find out what this angle is by doing pi minus that. So I'm going to call that alpha. And then this theta in our formula is going to be pi minus alpha, because obviously this whole angle is pi, and this one is alpha. So the one that I want is going to be pi minus alpha. So let's just actually figure out what alpha is through using this triangle that we've got here. I'm going to use tan, but it doesn't matter which one you want to do. So you could have done sine, cos, tan, whatever you like. But tan alpha is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 2 root 15 over 2. The 2's cancel. And so alpha is the inverse tan of root 15. So the area of the sector that I've got now, if I want to find out that, I can just use this formula. So it's going to be a half multiplied by the radius. You can tell that the radius is 8. So that's multiplied by 8 squared, multiplied by theta. And theta in this case is what we said is pi minus alpha, which is the inverse tan of root 15. So let's type all of this in. It's going to be a half times 8 squared, a half times 8 squared, times by pi minus the inverse tan of the square root of 15. Let's close that bracket off and close that bracket off. And we're just going to press SD so that we get it as a value. And so that is 58.351, blah, 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 blah. And so the total area, let's see if it wanted it in any way. It didn't say to any number of decimal places. So the total area is going to be the 2 root 15 plus the 58.3, blah, blah, blah. So let's just add 2 root 15. And we get 66.1 units squared. Pretty tough question, that one, particularly for that last bit of trying to find the area. I hope I got that right. Let's have a look. 66.1. Great. So we've got the first bit of drawn, the second bit drawn here with the part shaded in. And this is basically the same method that we did. This H they're referring to is the hypotenuse. So that's everything I wanted to talk to you about for chapter two on argand diagrams, um, particularly the the, the interesting bits, I think, is the loci and all of the, the regions that we have at the end. So good luck with your studies.